is fish easy welcome welcome everyone this is an opportunity to spend a saturday night looking at a few things that are going on and i'm going to be talking about the rams the german blue rams electric blue rams black rams and i'd like to speak about a couple of accomplishments in the fish room this week so we're going to see if somebody's going to join us very soon a couple people might join if you're uh, watching this in the replay crew please uh, mention something down below just kind of hit uh, uh, the, the thumbs up button and and make a comment that, that you're on the replay crew appreciate that very much yes Jeff welcome and uh, we're back and I'm going to try to do something I rebooted my phone to see if this would help before I just took the drastic measure of doing it again so red laser welcome and thank you very much so far everything's working out very smooth I'm glad about that so I again like I said earlier I missed out uh, I was selling fish 100 grams earlier but it was with a shop clear on the other side of uh, um, well it was a, quite a ways away near Toronto so for me it was uh, a ways away driving and I was able to swing by Roman's place earlier and drop off a couple of rams so Roman welcome back and I'm glad to see you it was uh, nice seeing you earlier today how are those rams doing were you able to uh, acclimate them so today uh, I want to point out a few things uh, I don't know if you actually had the chance to see the new babies that just popped out um, tails and scales uh, I have not brought any German blue rams over there they, they had some of mine from before and uh, when I was there picking up the black rams I mentioned to them that I also have the German blues they had picked up some from Malik um, and they were this was some little time ago so he said that uh, they could use some more so I have some more but I haven't gotten back to him. I think they want to give him a try again. So that's uh, not too far from where I work, but uh, it's still to get over there um, uh, when you're working full time and to get anywhere, anywhere of these places, it's kind of hard. Yes, um, that's the answer to that question. I wanted to show uh, something that I was pointing out earlier, and I'm going to do a test because this hasn't dropped out once since I rebooted, so that's a good sign. There may have been some issues there. But let's take a look at. Uh, the, I want to take a look at these discus again. Uh, I've got both of them going. The pair on the right have laid eggs. The male and female fight and bicker constantly. And they guard the eggs. So we'll see if there's actually any that actually hatch. And I don't know if they'll eat them once they hatch. They may start to be due. Because both of these, mother and father, they have both been excellent. They, they haven't... Um, had some excellent uh, par parental guidance so I have a feeling they'll be good parents once they get past that stage this is the first uh, batch I've gotten from this particular pair and I see the babies on there they're just kind of all stuck together and so I think that's kind of a nice thing it's a, it's a beautiful thing that they've that they've kind of settled down and now they're raising their babies so I'm anxious to see if uh, there's going to be an issue with the both of them, but I can't move them. I can't do much right now, so there's not much I can do with the fact that um, they're in the same tank. So the fact that they both went down on eggs at the same time, or nearly the same time, is a very good thing. I'm not, I'm not um, unhappy about that because this way they, uh, they might just prove to be good for one another. Well, um... Thank you, Roman, for the update on your rams. I uh, do have, I do want to tell you something. I, I had told you that the two females I gave you were, were actually uh, um, in a tank and by themselves, but that isn't actually true. When I went to get them, I thought they looked kind of drab and they looked a little young and I was afraid of putting them with yours. So what I did was I upgraded you and I took two, I took those two and I put them in with the, um, the rams to be sold in the future date. So in other words, give them some more time to color up. And I picked out some two nice females for you. And the, two, the reason I picked them out is because they look like they could go down on eggs soon. What I have found is if the male, if he's going to be very aggressive towards the female, 
Um, if you're going to introduce another fish, it's best you put one in there that's ready to go down on eggs because then she will very likely um, accept him. In other words, she'll be anxious to also go down on eggs and that they'll, he'll, he'll get himself a, a, a mate. And so that way he's not going to, he's going to be happy. But if the, in the case of the ones I was going to give you, I think that they were, um, they were, maybe they were younger, but they were just not in condition. So a female can go out of condition. What I mean is, uh, you know, she lays eggs, she, she loses all of her eggs, she's very thin, she loses her color, and so it's going to take a few weeks for her to get back into the state where she could be ready to lay eggs again. So that's when she's in condition. So out of condition is, is, is kind of scary because the male could just be chasing her because she's the only female in the tank and that's when people need to have a lot of hiding places for the female. So in this particular case, uh, I think what I gave you today is going to be the most successful of introducing them with a the male. Don't angelfish pair for life or am I wrong? A lot of cichlids pair for life and uh, that's not a bad question and they do pair for life and even the discus pair for life. But not all cichlids do. And what I've found is with the, the rams, they really don't pair for life. Uh, they seem to tolerate each other better if they're an actual pair that have accepted each other. But they very easily, if a female is out of condition, I can pull her out, put another one in, and phew, he's ready to go with her. And, and there is no long ritual of pairing off and acceptance and so forth. So with the rams, I have found, yeah, they do pair. And I haven't seen any strong bonds on the pairs. So that's something that you might want to consider. So in these tanks above my head, you see these ones right here. They each one has about two or three pair of rams in them. And uh, I collect the eggs. This week I've been collecting eggs uh, right and left. Here is uh, the success of the week. I'm going to show you from a distance. Let's change that. Here we go. So you see, um, what I had over there, I have um, this, this breeder box, two and three. So there's three breeder boxes. And if I hold my finger like that, this one is the oldest one, 86, 83. And then that one is 88. Okay. So actually, according to this, this is the oldest one. Yeah. So uh, this one occurred first, and but, but there are only... 83 to 86 is only three days difference so I'm going to end up combining these two even though they're both nice size batches but they're not super super batches so um, there's not over 400 so if there might be 150 in each one of these and they're only three days apart so I'm going to take these and, and mix them when I move them to the next arrangement now I've been I've been working with these breeder boxes put on the inside of the tank instead of the outside for a couple of reasons, and one of them I'm, I really want to make sure that that they get the proper heating, but I can't run the water through them uh, just yet because they have to be big enough so they don't get really sucked up. Now they'll get sucked up in the sponge and they will die. They, they just seem to like need to rest when they're a little younger. But these guys have been in, on um, baby brine shrimp. In fact, let's go take a look at them. And the signal seems to be working great now, so. Okay, so in this particular one, you can see they're getting to the point where they're eating the baby brine shrimp. They're doing very well. And then, um, and the, it's getting a little messy on the inside because I have to change the water manually because water's not running through. And I noticed something interesting because I had used some paramecium in the beginning. I noticed that the water, like this one, if you look real close, you'll see the paramecia. It looks like a cloud. If you look real close, you see kind of a cloud that's swirling through. And I noticed it, it doesn't seem to bother the fish, but I try to get rid of it. And I need to keep flushing, and I just been flushing and flushing and flushing these things, trying to get the paramecia out, because they're not really eating that anymore. They're eating the baby brine shrimp. So in this tank over here, where's where are they? Oh, 
They're way up here at the top. You can see them in the back corner. Nice group. And so this was the one I did last. So what I'll do is I'll take this uh, um, one and a half liter bottle of water, run it through the airline, and then just dump it into the uh, uh, clean water into the breeder box. But water is going to flow out. And so when it flows out, I put this thing here to catch the water and it keeps it from splashing all over. Otherwise, the sponge on the end is is doing nothing but uh, um, acting as a muffler. So it, it catches the water and it just muffles it. And so then it goes through the sponge and then it drips on the outside or the inside of this tube. And this is, of course, two liter. And so one and a half liters in and two liters out I never have an issue I'll just fill this will just fill up and then I can dump it so that's how I do it now I've also this week grabbed uh, uh, we had um, this one already hatched yesterday and I didn't get a chance to flush the water so this one is with nothing blue but I will flush the water very soon these are gonna hatch well wait a minute these should hatch today I think have they hatched yet let me, let me put on a light uh, I'm going to shine a light right on there, see if I can, I don't know if I can, no, the light's not helping, it's too much blue. It, this is, okay, you can see the eggs, I don't see any babies right now. So these haven't hatched yet, and and this, this also, you're on the side, okay, wait a minute, these ones hatched, they hatched today, yep, I think I see down on the bottom, uh, too dirty huh but anyway the eggs were on the side of the of the um, pot and so putting them kind of raised up I can tell when they hatch they drop to the bottom now I also got a spawn of electric blues and the electric blues um, they're in here but they're a day later and I, I can't seem just too dirty I didn't have a real clean one no they haven't hatched you can see the eggs through there. I don't know. That's terrible. You can't see that. No. But anyway, trust me, they're they're doing well. So that's another um, welcome, uh, Satoring du Dusan. Welcome. And uh, so that's that's another batch of electric blues, and they came from these blues down here. So being that they're uh, a more hybrid ram, these electric blues. I just put a um, saucer down in the corner because I noticed they were digging out uh, little depressions. So I wanted to see if they would lay, and sure enough, hey, Ray Aquatics, welcome. And uh, this is what happened. So you can see uh, I did get a, a batch of eggs, so I just pulled them. Obviously, in a tank like this with so many uh, hungry mouths, and you have uh, even plecos, obviously, uh, this is uh, a problem to let them raise any babies themselves when the barbs in there too are just like tigers those are those are african banded barbs and they will uh, no doubt uh, eat a fry faster than they you can uh, shake a stick so these these uh these young fish are looking right as now that they're laying i'm going to pick out uh three pair and put them in a small five gallon upstairs i say upstairs but i mean you know the top rack and uh, move them up and give them some space where they can do their thing this is the generation the first blue rams i've raised and the reason why um the reason why i um want to use these for breeders is because the original ones i got um they didn't do so well after you get them they 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 did lay eggs i did get some batches i've raised all these fries but you know, you'll do best, you'll always do best if you have fish raised in your own fish room and those become your breeders. And so these are the fish who are going to be my breeders. And then, of course, uh, um, I'll have to part with a few of them. But that those are the best ones because they're raised here. I don't know where the originals came from. I got them from Fanatics. And so it's possible that those... Uh, fish that uh, were the original the original ones that were breeding I, I have a I suspect that they uh, probably 
um, came from imported from another country or something I don't know but I do know that these because I, I don't think they were locally bred but these uh, electric blues um, just came out sensational so yeah I want to keep my best stock thank you Stephen and uh, this is is important to pick out always you know the best of the best and then the rest uh, can be sold and, uh, the, the, and I also have three pair that are going to a gentleman here in the neighboring city I owe it to him he's the one that gave me this pair here and uh, here's the pair a pair of discus so he wanted some electric blues I said yeah I have some and he was impressed and so he gave me this pair of discus and I'm gonna give him some uh, electric blues and this pair is ready uh, laid eggs twice but I don't have them on RO water and as, as we discussed in past weeks the problem with um, having them in hard water is the eggs after three days they don't hatch and the parents just eat them because they never hatch so that's what happened so I'm going to uh, middle planted aquatics welcome I'm going to have to um, um, change the water out and I'm going to start a system where I, I, I generate the RO water and I use a heater and then once the temperature is high enough and uh, in this little five gallon bucket it is but now how do I get it up from there to the upper tank so I'm going to be uh, devising um, in fact maybe tomorrow maybe tomorrow or later tonight I'm going to take this uh, pump and uh, I'm going to use it. So I'm going to put it in the bottom. It's a um, it's a little um, it's a stronger pump than the other one I have. This one that you see inside there is a little fountain pump, and it's like a little workhorse around here. But it's not strong enough to go um, three levels of rack. It just goes like two levels max, but one level good. So like for you see from the floor, it'll go up one level very easily. And it'll fill up this tank. So that's what I use to uh, put put water. Okay, there they go. They're going to. They're fighting again. You see what I mean? They've got eggs, and they just keep fighting. They bicker over who's going to be the one to take care of the babies. It seems I don't know. Can't figure it out. They're they're uh, mouth jaw locking. So I'm going to take this uh, pump. And I'm going to use this one. So what's nice is it's got a uh, a thread. So in, this is threaded right here, and I'm going to just take a... I've got two um, uh, little devices. One is... Where did I put that? Mm. I don't... Oh, I've misplaced it. Sorry about that. So you're probably wondering, what am I looking at? What is going on? Um, I'm looking around, because in the fish room, especially this fish room, I set something down. Oh, here they are. So the, the, I'm going to use these two pieces, and, uh, and uh, I had these extra. I went digging through my, my plumbing supplies. So I'm going to take this. Uh, is a, it fits perfectly in here, so I'm going to take this and uh, put a half-inch male, and then this turns into a three-quarter slip. And the slip is a three-quarter piece of uh, PVC. Then I have this three-quarter slip, and so I just need a piece of PVC to fit, and that's just going to go on there like that, with a piece of uh, three-quarter like that. And on this side, this is an FHT. So that stands for three-quarter inch FHT. Um, that's a female post thread female hose thread. So all I need to do then is take um, a hose and uh, screw it in. So regular garden hose. So that's what this is. This, this transforms from three quarter slip to a garden hose. Once I have a garden hose, it's over. <coughs> Excuse me. So I go from the, uh, the RO water down on the floor and then I can flip a switch in this pump is then going to take um, and I'll just it'll be just pouring out of the hose so I can then lift it the water all the way up onto the top floor now this tank already has if I uh, show you the tank that I'm talking about 
this tank already has a um, drain on it, so it's super easy to drop their water. I'll do that now. So I'm dropping their water. I'm draining the tank. You see it dropping. It drops quite fast. In fact, it's only a 15 gallon, but it's going to drop it um, about a third. So five gallons. Not while I hardly can finish this sentence before five gallons is gone and it's time to refill. Okay, that's it. Boom. And that's all I drop it to and that takes two minutes to fill with my other pump. But I really would like to do RO water because uh, these fish need to be in RO water so we can get some eggs hatching. And right now the eggs are not hatching. The nice thing about the uh, discus that we were just looking at and the fact that they're spawning and they're hatching their eggs is that um, my pH is still 8.7. Um, it's 8.7, 8, 8.1. It says right here, 8.1 out of the tap. And I'm not really doing anything to drop the pH for those discus. So they're, they're raising fry and they're breeding an 8.1 pH. I, I don't know if I really want to try dropping the pH if they're being if they're willing to breed in the Brampton water where I live because if you can get fish to breed in the water that where you live you're so much better off now once I get this one third the water and it's already heated it's 82 83 degrees I'm just going to pump it up and I can just keep refilling that bucket. So that's my system for the RO water. And um, my white cable is right here. It's filling the bucket. My uh, actual filter sits on the shelf right there. As you can see right here, this is the filter. And it's tied in with a, a, um, a uh, down below you see, can you see the red knob? There's a blue one and a red one in the center of your screen. The top one is the uh, regular tap water. The red one is the RO water. So I can just turn on the RO water, set the timer, come back in one hour and five minutes, and five gallons will be filled, and the five gallons will then be starting to heat. I have a couple of heaters in there to bring it up to temperature. Yes, yes, Stephen. Excellent points, and uh, just as I say, if the fish are accustomed to my water, I'm much better off rather than chasing some sort of parameter. By the way, I'm very impressed with the uh, McMastery epistogrammas that I have. Uh, the longer I have them, the more I'm impressed with the colors that are just coming out. And they're just, I've never seen epistogrammas that are so large either. These are very large. Let's take a quick look at them. But uh, I, I did some research. I tried to do some uh, looking up of information on them and I found out that basically these fish, where are they? Okay, there's a, here he's back in the corner. Huh. I'm gonna have to do some adjustments. Looks like the rams in this tank are kind of chasing them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take them out, the rams anyway, because I sold those rams today and I can do it. But this is, a, I think the female, oh, what are you getting in the way? Anyway, there she is in the middle. She's got some color. Let's just look at this male here, though. It'll give you an idea of what they're looking like. They're really looking sharp. Let me bring the light up. Oop, scared him. He didn't like that. No, no, no. Little Cory cat. Oh, oh, there he is. There's another one. There's the other one. I'm not convinced I have a pair in here. Uh, <laughs> I think I have what they call a sleeper male. It's a male that kind of looks like a female. But um, I'm going to try pulling him out. Here he comes. He's going to come back in the light. But look at the colors on this thing. Yeah, this one's, this one's got a little busted lip. See, I don't know if that's a female or not. It looks to me like a male. But I'm going to try pulling it out and letting it have its own tank. And then um, if they have their own tank, uh, you might change into a dominant male. 
If he really is a female, he won't be able to do that. But uh, is that a pair? He's busted. It looks like she busted her lip. Look at that. Look at the colors on that thing. We're looking, hi Malik. We're looking at the McMaster eye. They are a beautiful fish. I'm um, impressed with them. But when I did some reading up, everybody says they're very difficult to uh, breed and without putting them in like P low pH. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. And I, I hope I don't have to. But we'll see. We'll see if they do anything. If they don't, then uh, I may just... If they don't, then I'm just going to have to uh, try try lowering the pH. I'll put them in some RO water, put some uh, leaves in the water, and let it slowly uh, decay, and and just see what happens. So I'll fix up an epistogramma tank for them, because they are a very beautiful fish, and I think there's probably some demand for them. Uh, they aren't cheap either, so... Uh, I think they were being sold like 25 a piece or $50 a pair for for these fish in uh, Fanatics. Look at that. Maybe it is a pair. The way they're acting now, they're acting like it's a pair. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. So anyway, I got two pair, and the male over here kind of went into hiding, but we'll see. I'm gonna fish those. Oh, and here's uh, the last of my my um, checkered barbs. These are the ones that Chris Stubbs didn't make get, but uh, it's amazing. I think I had we ended up with 116 checkered barbs out of that batch, and a few of the green tigers that grew up alongside them. And the checker barbs are looking really great. If you haven't seen uh, Stubbs's video that he produced last week on these, um, I did put it in the uh, um, the link to last week's uh, live stream. And he's he's really got a great um, number of uh, fish. They look nice, and uh, I'm glad he got a good number of them because he's going to have a beautiful swarm, especially if they get as dark as the ones we were just looking at a moment ago. So, so that's, uh, I've got, these are, these were for sale. I, I had, uh, I had a pair lay eggs on that rock back there, but uh, I left them in a day and then I went to get the eggs. And you know what? After I got them, I went to reach in there to get the eggs and the eggs were gone. So, it is very possible that I didn't notice when they were actually laid and they actually hatched so in another couple of days I'll know if they start if I see any babies starting to swarm but right now the um, there's what a pair in the back there's a pair in the front um, but these are the ones I was I've been selling uh, this one's got a very interesting uh, uh, dorsal fin it looks more like a, I don't know I don't know what you describe it but he's He's very unique. He's the one that laid the eggs, and this is the female. They're the ones that laid the eggs in that pot last week, and uh, during the week, and so I have their babies. Metalheads Aquatic Mayhem. Welcome. Welcome to the live stream tonight, and Fish Easy 411. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, and also uh, a, um, uh, a chance to subscribe if you want to um, be notified of in your stream of uh, whenever I do go live and uh, when I'm able to put out some videos so this this in this stream we didn't really get down into the to the black rams like we did earlier before the issues with the internet but here's some shots of the black rams um, and there's one checkered barb you're looking at and I can't 
I'm just amazed at how the checkered bar blends in so well with black rams. So if you want a cheap man's black ram, just get checkered bars. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. Yeah, he just thinks he's a black ram. He won't bother him either. <laughs> yeah, these guys. So I'm looking for any signs of uh, mating and activity in here, but I'm just kind of giving them a week or two to kind of settle in. And before I, I, I start pulling out pairs and putting them in individual breeder, bo uh, breeder tanks. As you can see, they're all over the tank. I think there's six pair, and I haven't lost any. And the, I keep watching the fins to make sure they're not tearing each other apart. I think it's better to have uh, more than less if you want them to spread out the aggression. I've been watching carefully to see if they lay over here in the corner. I've got this rock here, and uh, they've been... They, they start to, what they do is they first pick up the sand and they put it in. Um, that's a good question about the hexameter. Um, I don't know about that. If anybody does know, Teabag de, Bre de Beek. Yes, these are uh, black rams uh, that were picked up a few weeks ago and um, two weeks ago, I think. In fact, I'm just waiting for them to, to kind of fill out. I'm kind of conditioning them. And uh, we'll see what happens. They look nice. They're very dark. They're not the blackest black. Um, but I think that's a good thing. Because uh, I don't want to... I want to be able to experiment. There's actually a couple in here that are very deep black. And so that's good enough to have. This, this female right here, for example. And like this male here, you can see it's 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 a dark it's a dark night. It's but you can see some color coming through. But uh, but definitely a black ram. And I see there's different levels of quality as you go. So that is what it is. So these uh, these little guys. This is the latest batch of Lucipinus. Um, I want to put on a show for you tonight. These guys are just kind of hanging out the surface. That's why I don't use the um, the uh, breeder box flow through because they they just start to wedge themselves in. They like to wedge themselves into a dark corner, and they'll go into the corner and then they'll get wedged in the where the, the sponge is, and then that will do them in. So I've got to change the water regularly, and I just do it by draining and refilling. This batch over here hasn't done as well, and uh, I'm going to take the third batch. We have some eggs here from yesterday. No, this morning I took. Well, they're from yesterday. They let yesterday, and I uh, you see the eggs. Um, I can see them better if I take the flashlight. There you go. You see the eggs. I see the clear ones. There we go. See the nice clear ones. They look kind of. Uh, glassy colored those ones still might hatch so but the white ones no they won't hatch but you don't see any fungus you notice so I think keeping um, clean I put in like into the um, um, this is the the tra egg trap and the egg trap um, is was cleaned I had uh, totally sterilized it with uh, bleach and then let it completely dry and then this one is the one now there's water in this one this is see because I pulled out eggs from this one I'll be putting this into a breeder box when it's ready and this one I'll give it another day and then I'll flush it out again and I'll still get another 10 10 or so um, um, baby catfish out of there it's just funny how they sit um, in the bottom, and I and I try to fish them out, but it, it, for some reason um, I can't get them all. So I know if I leave them in there, and they hatch in there. They're they're going to be moving and wiggling, and then they seem to be able to flush. Otherwise, 
I'm not going to take out the marbles. I don't want to sit here and take out each marble. So I just let them hatch, just like this one, and then. Okay, so. No, I, 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 I appreciate that comment. Um, that was a very interesting comment that was made by um, my friend there. Just so you know, um, the one who made the comment, Mayor Three Tears, that's uh, uh, a gentleman here in Brampton. And he's, I think in Brampton or Mississauga. I can't remember, but you've been here to my house and picked up rams. And uh, I hope you're doing well with them. Um, these particular r blue German blue rams came from a, a gentleman, also in Brampton here, just not too far from where I live. And I got started with him. I got, uh, I think I bought three pair originally, and I went back for two more pair. And so my total investment was. Um, I think in the in the range of uh, sixty or eighty dollars, but I've been very pleased with them. And yeah, I think it was I paid ten piece. So, but uh, very pleased with them. And uh, last year alone, I produced uh, close to three thousand dollars worth of uh, ram sales. So this year, I'm on track for much higher. So, what can I say? You know, they, they're good quality, and I've not had any issues, and except for. The occasional bloat which means I'm feeding too much and I can usually curb that by just simply uh, reduce the amount of feeding and, and increase the amount of water changes and they do great so with the uh, electric blue rams with the black rams uh, that's the issue that I wanted to discuss simply that they grow slower but what that means is they're maturing later too they don't like start maturing at a younger age just because they're smaller. So it's the whole process. It's not just their size. So when a fish is um, uh, having difficulties with genetics, or in other words, because of their genetics, they're having difficulties growing, that doesn't mean that they're gonna just mature the same amount of time. It means they're gonna take longer to mature it as well. So it's like having a shall I put it this way, a, um, um, a pituitary gland that is not as functional as normal, is sort of substandard, so maybe that's what it is, whatever gland that they have in their, in their um, biology that causes them to grow. So I don't get a lot of, a whole lot of um, um, runts. And I don't think it's because of genetics. And the reason I say that is because I will, in one batch, might get a bunch of small ones that don't grow, but there are some in the same batch that grow very fast. So there's a lot of discrepancy. But at the same time, I'll get another batch up from the same pair, and there's not that situation, and they just grow like crazy. So. What does that tell me? It tells me that it's environmental. And so the way I'm raising them, or maybe the way I'm overcrowding them at the moment. Uh, in this case, for example, I have a small two and a half gallon. It was all I had for the, to put these guys in at the time. You'll notice that there's some very large ones, and there's some super tiny ones. The reason that there's such a discrepancy in this case is because I had to find a place for two batches and one was quite a bit smaller than the other batch. So they're actually from two batches. But I don't like doing that because what I've noticed is that the bigger fish somehow, just like in the case of discus, if they're with larger fish, it seems to, they seem to put out something that causes the other fish to stay small. You know what I mean? Stay small. In other words, it kind of inhibits them, an inhibitor. So it's best, if possible, not to mix them like this. So don't do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> if you have the ability to have more tanks and to separate them, put the bigger ones together, keep them the same size in the same tank, and the smaller ones together, and you'll see that the smaller ones will start growing. So that's, that's some of the things that have been going on this week. Um, it's been a busy week. 
and as it always is, right? But um, um, I'm going to um, finish off the 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 uh, suggestions. The best suggestions for the week or from the week have been to uh, in my little two and a half gallon um, egg scatterer breeder contraption, the tank is and to get the gap gone the best person or best suggestion I got from a person was to use like some tubing airline tubing and cut it down down maybe one length and then just put that on the end so in other words cap the glass and that kind of expands it where you need to expand it and the fish won't be able to get through I think it's a great idea um, I'm gonna give that a whirl so, I just haven't had a chance to, and uh, tonight, uh, also, uh, there was a little comment I wanted to make about some medication that I got. So, remember we were talking about holding the head, and hexameda, hexameda, and so, I got this. Fritz. Paracleans. Now, the reason I got this was because I went online and I said I need something for Hexmeda. And it says for the treatment and control of a wide variety of parasitic diseases, including velvet, fish lice, hole in the head disease. And in parentheses it says Hexameda, SPP, period, and Spironucleus. It also treats gill and skin flukes, and uh, so I thought, you know, this is what I need. I wanted to make sure my discus didn't have uh, any issues with hexameter, right? Because I got them new um, from somebody else, and there's obviously been some a hole in the head in one pair of them. Yeah, it could be old wounds, or it could be they've already been treated and everything's okay. But I said, I, I want to treat them myself right now before I start spending time trying to breed them. But something that occurred to me that was very strange. So I said, look, you see this? What's in it? And so I know that you can't get disease, you can't get remedies for diseases in Canada, but I was able to just order this on Amazon and it just came. Now, what's really odd about that is that um, the ingredients to this is, believe it or not, each packet contains 250 milligrams of metro nita soli and 75 milligrams of prazi quantel. That's it. So this packaging says. I'm going to give my fish 25 millig 250 milligrams of Metro and 75 milligrams of Prazi and it's going to cure all those things. Now, if I had known that, <laughs> I, would have, I would have said, but wait a minute, I have Metro. I have Metro pills. I bought some from the store. I was able to get some even though you can't import that into Canada. And wait a minute, I have some Prozzi right up here. Prozzi Quant meal. Called Prozzi Pro. Let me see what the ingredients are. When you get to this age, you gotta take your glasses off to see. An inert substance and less than 5% Prozzi Quantel by weight. So I have the two ingredients that I bought. I can't get the individual packages of these two items, but I can order them together as Fritz Paraclins. I don't understand that. I don't understand how that's possible. In fact, it doesn't make any sense to me at all because this one doesn't say anything about curing or helping 
hole in the head. It just talks about for parasites, yes, internal parasites especially. And the other one does too. I mean, it's like it doesn't really explain that, oh, by the way, it cures these other things. You'd think that they, it would. So, did it really do its job? Or... Well, your comments are appreciated. And in fact, there's a few comments here. I'd like to see here. I'm just anxious to hear what you say. Um, oh, there's been a couple of comments. I didn't see this. Sorry about that. Let me go back through the comments. Okay. Last comment I remember here was from uh, Mayor Three Tears. Yes, um, so that's interesting you say that about the Czech rams. The original fish, I didn't finish my thought about the fellow who I got my rams from. He said that they were the product of a Czech female and a local, and a local uh, male uh, that was in Hamilton. So that's where the family line came from. So it was like kind of a uh, cross between two fish that were unrelated and so all these fish have been doing very well so I'm, I'm really happy about that fish tropic canada pokemon can't catch them all i don't know if you can use this pokemon here but are you a fish gamer must be a question for someone else Oh, I see. You're referring to his name. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not 12 years old anymore. Oh, okay. Original pair from uh, from Rob. Oh, I see. These are, yeah, Roberts uh, breeds great quality fish. Says he only sells once a year. No, I don't feed blood worms to my uh, to my fish, but if too much feeding, just overfeeding, um, will cause bloat. And in, in especially in uh, Odessa barbs, and any of the barbs really, you need to be careful not to feed too high of a protein um, food. So what I've been doing is um, uh, I have a 33% um, veggie kind of uh, protein, 33% protein on the veggie pellets and that's what I feed most of the time to the uh, barbs. Okay. I'm sure it's interesting what Abdullo is praising or saying, but I have no clue what he says. Okay. Fleckles, yeah. Yeah, general cute. You said cute, but I think cure. Yeah, there you go, general cure. Uh huh. Yeah, the Prozzi Pro. I think, I think that's a good stuff. I I've always used it. I've never really, uh, I've never had a situation where I'm stuck on um, um, worms or felt that I have fish with worms. But I've always quarantined and administered the Quasi Pro when I need to administer. In fact. Thank you for mentioning that. I haven't given it to the black rams. I don't know that they need it, but I'm going to go ahead since um, um, they did make it to a fish store and they were in a fish store for a little while. You never know what they could have picked up, but so far, so good. What if I had them a week or two weeks and not a single sign of anything? Um, could it be... A combination of the two drugs could be could be I'm going to answer the question a little more scientifically if you could actually not so much scientifically but what I would say is I'm gonna go out there find some medications also for a hole in the head and I'm gonna see what the ingredients are on those I'd like to see what they're using and it may be different chemicals. But I really don't know if this is going to work. All I know is I've treated them, all the discus here, 
all the adult discus. I haven't treated the uh, baby discus because they were raised here. They were not exposed to any hole in the head. They were they were hatched in uh, fresh water and separated long before I even got these new discus. So I do have this little fear in the back of my mind that maybe there's some disease they're, they're bringing in, but that's because I've heard so many horror stories. But I don't know that there's any issue here at all, so I'm going to just go on that faith that there's no issues. So, um, you've treated your hole in the head angel fifth with, with just water changes. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Could be. Huh. And Steve Rubicki. Now, if any of you want to know who Steve Rubicki is and uh, um, going on with that, I will say this much. I watched, or actually, I didn't watch, I listened to a podcast of Steve Rubicki. It's from the um, uh, the Aquarium Guys podcast, and it was, I think, their number six, was it? Or number four? It's one of the original early podcasts. And they've had Steve Rubicki, I think, on their podcast twice. And I, I, used, I used to listen to them all the time. Every week I would be listening to uh, the Aquarium Guys in my fish room while I was doing water changes. I love to listen to podcasts when I'm driving and when I'm and I'm doing stuff in the fish room. And uh, I was super impressed with Steve Rubicki's comments, his, uh, his wisdom, his experience, his beautiful fish. Mind you, he can get a lot of fortune for him, and he's um, rightly so. You, you should get a fortune for something that's worth it. And uh, would love to get some of those uh, beautiful angels that he's got. But um, I recommend you all listen to that uh, podcast. It's just it's just tremendous. Um, um, you go to your podcast. I think I use um, Google. I think it's pretty much Google um, podcast, the one I go to. But you can get it through. Um, I think they're also on uh, um, several other places where you go to get podcasts. And just look through their, their their list. They've done over a hundred of them, but in the last uh, few months, they've uh, slowed up tremendously on their their number of podcasts for whatever personal reasons, I guess. But um, you know, I just 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 beware. I I, I listen to them, but uh, I've never grown accustomed to some of the the language and the. Um, innuendos that they're always constantly putting out so for me it's it's I just listen for the, uh, the fish content I try to go with that and having Steve Rubicki on there was sensational so I, I recommend you go back and, and find that one so I hope uh, this has been an educational mo uh, episode this week I did have one other I wrote it down. Let me see what it was. It was the pump, and I think I covered that. I wanted to show you the pump and what I was thinking about doing and how I'm going with that. So to answer your question, uh, there was one question here about the fish room expansion. Well, fish room expansion is obviously in need. I need to grow out space for these um, uh, rams and other fish. If I if I uh, like to breed fish, which I do, obviously, I want to share more great content with you. I want to share with you how I, my successes and failures and what I've learned in the breeding process. And I want it to be something that people can, can mimic and have success with also. But um, in order to do that, I need to have uh, a place for my tanks. So I've got over a thousand gallons of tanks that haven't even been set up because the, the, the progress is I do not have a place to set them up so they're empty basically so hopefully soon I'll find a place rent a place um, some space and be able to set them up and uh, have a place for these young fish to go to 
And who knows, it would even be a place where I can uh, share with you as well on the live streaming so you can see um, what uh, um, what other tanks I have. I think there's there's something like six 55 gallons and, um, and maybe another six uh, 75 gallons. I don't know exactly, but it, it's like a good, um, I think it's close to 20 tanks that are over 50, 50 gallons or more. So 20, 21 tanks uh, of that size uh, is just going to be perfect. So I think that if you put fish in a 50 gallon tank, uh, the whole batch and they'll grow up to, to the point where you can sell them right from the 50 you don't need to go to even larger to the next size up it's they're going to get big enough and then they'll go to market so that's what um, uh, is in store in the very near future I say near future because I have to uh, do something about it in just the upcoming weeks by the end of the month in fact and in order to get things rolling but it's going to take a while definitely all right, um, do I leave the ram fry with adults? Craig Doniger is asking. Well, um, I do not, and every time I've ever left rams with their parents, uh, I'll lose 50% by the time they get old enough to take out. It's, there's a lot of perils of, of living and growing up with older fish around you. And I don't know why, but you know whether it's, it's just Sometimes maybe mom and dad need a snack and they decide to snack in the middle of the night. I don't know. I don't know if it's because they get lost and they need to be with their grouped up. And so I find that the smaller breeder boxes are best and, uh, and, and do as uh, um, my friends down in uh, Australia do. And that is they get, the, they get them into um, bigger tanks as soon as you can and let them, ex let them grow and give them plenty of fresh water and feed them um, three times a day you know multiple times small amounts compared to just one time large amount if you can do that they'll grow fast so that's the best way to do it so it's been a quite an evening I'm getting a little exhausted but I do have um, a number of things to finish up here and as you can see I want to put together that that pump um, um, for the hose connection so that I can pump water up to my uh, my uh, discus tank and start putting in um, RO water it's been great I hope uh, I was able to answer all the questions and uh, <laughs> you two are Mayor Three Tears is also agreeing with me. It's not worth it, and I, I, it just depends, I guess. You know, I, I've often thought in a couple cases where I did leave them in there because either I forgot to strip the eggs and it was fine, you know, I leave the eggs in there, I just want to see what would happen, so I've done it. But um, I also see the, the other issue, and that is overcrowding. You, you raise too many fry you end up with too many. So as long as you have the grow out space, fine. You know, strip them and, and yeah, maximize your yield. But if you don't have the grow out space and you need to lose and you only want to raise, say, 20 out of the group, um, I had one batch. In fact, in the tank right below us is, is uh, I'm going to show you, um, I took, I took these uh, rams. And this is a cross between a German blue and electric blue. I wanted to see what I would get out. And they were raised by their parents until at one point the, the mom got very, very aggressive. And I had to remove the male. And then uh, I don't know how they're going to turn out. But I only have in this, in this tank uh, probably eight or ten of them. That's all that, it, that I saw that survived out of that batch. If I only got eight or ten of them, I'd never make any money. Um, breeding fish that's for sure but in this case um, as you can see I don't know what it's gonna look out I think they're gonna look like German German blues uh, here's another one they're just gonna look like German blues and they're gonna have probably a gene for the electric blue and unless you can get the electric blue to um, uh, be if we breed these two together you might get a certain percentage of electric blues 
but I have a feeling that they're going to be um, heterogeneous. So they're definitely just going to see this, these rams in here. They're all crosses, but they just look like German blues. So I don't know. Do you see any electric blue in them? I don't. I really don't. Their shape is all kind of like an electric blue, like the father, which means kind of a shorter dorsal. So their shape may have been affected, but the electric blue coloration did not come out. So I was just curious as to how that would be. I guess if you took black rams, crossed them with German blues, um, those that come out were probably mostly German blues. I don't even know if you get any blacks. Uh, the recessive gene would be hiding, and then you'd have to take those progeny, and you would have to put them back on a black in order to get black out of the uh, offspring. So that's that's how you would do it and then that way you're introducing uh, uh, a, you're getting uh, they should have an intermediate phenotype. They look like Jim Blue's a bit more blue. Hmm. Yeah, could be. Um, when they get a little bigger and they start getting their color, I think that's when I really will pass judgment on them. But um, And dark should be stunning. Um, just so you know, I actually um, saw on Facebook a stunning picture of a black, um, and it had um, it had electric blue fins, and I was like, wow, that came out. It's like, wow, that was just one in a million fish. So I asked the owner. I says, uh, um, is that black ram crossed with electric blues? And and he answered me, and he said yes. So. I was really super impressed with it. It was just one amazing fish, and I was just stunned. And uh, of course, it's one thing to see an outstanding one, one in a million fish. It's another thing to get a whole batch of them that are uh, homogeneous, you know, across the line or all the same. But um, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mayor Three Tears, for your comments and your input. It's very, um, whoops, what happened there? What happened? Uh-uh. Somehow, I touched something and it deleted all of his messages. Uh, go add moderator. Okay, I don't know what happened. Uh, I just made you a moderator instead. I don't know if that helps, but I deleted some of your messages. You deleted. How do I undelete them? Hmm. I don't know how to undelete them. Well, that's, sorry about it. Yeah, please send me pictures about what you're talking about. Um, my finger, I was trying to get the down arrow to see more messages, and somehow a pop-up came, and I touched, and poof, your messages got deleted. Anyway, uh, sorry about that. It wasn't intentional. I'm looking at this. It would be better without my glasses. The dark, gene, he says, the dark gene should actually be dominant, curiously enough, but for some reason, the fry aren't 50-50, they're more so 80-20. Yeah, of course, because that's part, partly the way it works with uh, recessive genes. So, you say 80-20, but it's really, uh, it's really 25, 100%, 25 cross, 50-50, and the other 25 is 50-50, and the other, um, I don't know how to express it. It's like you're getting 80-20 because really what you're seeing is... Um, 25, 25, 25, and 25. So, 75 and 25, which is very similar to the 80, 20, you're, you're, you're thinking. But um, even still, you know, you can count all you want um, with with numbers and, and percentages, but the truth is it's biology and you could get some strange things. I mean, it's true, you can flip a coin and it's supposed to come up heads or tails 50% of the time. 
but how is it that some people can flip it so many times and get five straight heads or ten straight tails? It's possible, and it has been done. So, okay, thank you for mentioning. I can't get those comments back. Very sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know, because, yeah, I couldn't see a, a way of uh, undeleting. That is terrible. I can view the deleted messages. Is it all of it? Oh, it's all of his messages. Oh. Well, that's a tremendous loss. Well, you learn something every day, as I say. Uh, I think he's still on, though. I don't know how to... Is anybody else? Some of you are moderators, yeah? Do you know how to undo that? I can read the messages. But they're... they're okay, but he is a moderator now, so maybe that won't happen next time. I don't know. Thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. I'll uh, have to go and Google that one and figure out what I did wrong. Of course, I'm glad I rebooted my phone this uh, second time for the live stream. First time, uh, maybe I'll just delete that one, that episode, because we covered everything again on this one. But for some reason, I just wasn't connecting. I think it's a software issue. I had something running in the background that was interfering. So glad you could all join us. Give me a thumbs up and appreciate all the interaction and the questions. Some really good comments tonight. And we got to see a few new things. I'm really excited about the new Discus babies. I don't know if they're going to survive, but once you get them to hatch, I think they do much better. Um, they have a much stronger chance of uh, survival than they do if they're just eggs, because the eggs seem to around here seem to get eaten a lot. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll be in touch. Uh, maybe next week is um, um, another opportunity. I'll probably try to do it at 4.11, and uh, once a month maybe do a later one. So that, or whenever I, I have to, I'll just pick it up again later in the evening. So everyone have a good night, and thank you so much for, for joining, and uh, appreciate the comments, and give me uh, your, your feedback. If you leave some comments down below, I do appreciate that, and I will, as always, reply to them. So leave your questions, and I'll be happy to, to address them. So thank you, and good night, and for all the work that you do with your fish, be sure to always remember... Keep it real.